Wanna Go Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Jesse Blake. Every episode, we've partnered up with Crown Royal to, re- to reward a crown. Yes. In sports, we each get one. Mm-hmm. I get one, you get one, Adam gets one. Sometimes I get three. Sometimes you get three, whenever you feel like it. Because that's how this works. Well, today, my crown goes to the St. Louis Blues. Okay. Because on Sunday, yesterday, they won the Stanley Cup. Uh, what? Congratulations to the St. Louis Blues on winning the Stanley Cup. How did... Yeah, on their first ever, I suppose. Yeah, their first ever Stanley Cup. It was crazy. They went on a home ice. They're cup champions. Now, when you and Ian last show were talking about how you haven't watched the Stanley Cup final, I didn't realize how literally you meant it. Like, you didn't see Game 6. Who needs to watch Game 6 when you can read the St. Louis Dispatch? Oh! When you can get an e-newspaper from the St. Louis Dispatch hours before the game, and their headline reads, Congratulations to our champions, the St. Louis Blues. Uh. (laughs) And and their article that included a letter from majority owner Tom Stillman that read, Winning the Stanley Cup was a dream come true for so many of you. All of us will will remember where where we were. (laughs) <laughs> what we did and how we felt when the Blues brought the cup home. Ugh. Each of us will have a library of memories to pass down for generations. Forward to celebrating with you as we parade the cup down Market Street. Thanks, Je- St. Louis Dispatch. Jesse. <laughs> so I used to write for the LeafsNation.com. Yeah. And my articles were rife with mistakes. Mm-hmm. And uh, even when uh, Justin Fisher took over for a while and, and he was the managing editor there, articles would have mistakes, but he was an extremely good manager, content mm. manager. That's great. That's what you need. Yes. Yeah. He, he. I felt like I was a good content creator. He was a good content manager. Uh, and you had to be organized and you had to be crafty mm-hmm. because what separated blogs from like bigger news sites was that bigger news sites had more resources. So fewer mistakes were going to get through because there's just more parts to that machine. There is essentially no difference between blogs and sites like that anymore. Uh, Newspapers? Yes, because they don't have any resources anymore. (laughs) It's true, it's true. So the difference between that and like a pension plan puppets or a uh, leafsnation.com... Is a letterhead. It's not much. Well, the gap's closing fast. One thing that is different is clearly the distribution. Mm -hmm. The pension, the PPP can't put out a newspaper to the entire city of Toronto. This was the e copy, though. This was the the e letter. And when you get to this, this is just a matter of somebody scheduled this wrong in the back end of WordPress. Oh, do you think that's what it was? Or they just hit publish too soon. I think they just missed it. No. I think, they could no? have missed I think they just sent it out too soon. Because it wasn't even like, oh, hey, let's make up this thing because they won, and then let's let's publish it. And everyone's yeah. like, oh, yeah, this looks great. Let's publish. No. Went, click. I, I think this went out before it should have. Right? Oh, man. It's embarrassing either like, way. Either way, yeah. Embarrassing. It's a monumental fuck up. It is. I can already picture the tweet. Pete Blackburn uh-huh. at the parade, beer in one hand, <laughs> holding up Blues win the championship. Like, come on. And and he's going to, like, you know me with my kindergarten things with the Raptors, my kindergarten pictures that I was handing out? No. His job at the parade is just to get different Bruins to hoist that. The hoist the picture of... Blues win! <laughs> Blues win! Imagine David Backus... Former Blues captain holding Blues win at the Bruins Cup Parade. Hey, you add on the fact that the St. Louis Post-Dispatch clearly teamed up with the team. Because there's a letter from the owner in there. Right? So they Not clearly ha- they had some conversations with the team, obviously, to get this letter from the yeah. owner. Yeah, for sure. 
So how much more of that? The St. Louis must be emailing them and yelling at them right now. Oh, the Blues? Yeah. Oh, it makes it harder for them to do something like that ever again. Right. We'll send it to you when we send it to you. Right. It will send it to you when the because if you're if you're the Blues like PR person, you're like, well, it's about to be the busiest night of my life if we win the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. Right. So sure, I'll get this out of the way. Write it beforehand. It'll send it to you. That way, I don't have to chase you around or send you any files when I should be ushering all our players to various different news outlets because they just won the biggest game in the franchise's history in half a century. But (laughs) sometimes, and I mean, hockey people are very superstitious. If they lose the cup because of this. Do you know what their excuse was? What? The Oh, the the newspaper? No. They tweeted afterwards. In preparation for the outcome of the Stanley Cup final, some of our readers got a sneak peek at what our advertisers are hoping to say to the Blues. The fans and St. Louis. We apologize for the sneak peek and hope to share their messages with everyone very soon. That's okay. <laughs> so now again, we have them going, oh, it's a sneak peek of the future. And what's different? What's the difference between them going, oh, it's a sneak peek of the future and DJ Bean from Listen to Brunch going, you know, the Bruins are winning the cup, right? There's not much difference, man. No. Except he's like an out in the open fan. Right, right. Oh, boy. Anyway, That's bad. That's embarrassing. Steve, you have a crown to give out? I do. You're giving it to. Uh, Everyone is praising Tuka Rask. Mm -hmm. Tuka Rask, Tuka Rask. Deservedly so. Deservedly so. I just feel like in defensive performances, um, the goalie is just the easy default to go to. And if the Bruins win the Cup, Tuka Rask is going to win the Conn Smythe trophy, trophy. I've even seen some talk that if they lose, he could win it. I don't think he's been... you got to be otherworldly good. How many times has that happened in the history of I want to say twice. Like, it was yeah. J.S. Jaguar. That's the one. And was it Ron Hextall? I can't, or no, Ron Hextall scored a goal in the playoffs, I think. It's very, very rare. And people are calling for Eric Carlson to win it, even though his team didn't even oh. make it to the Stanley Cup. Hey, how about this? Okay. Five players have won the Conn Smythe Five. Trophy as members of teams that have lost in the Stanley Cup final. What are the years? 1922. 1966. Okay. Uh, Roger Crozer. Am I saying that correctly? Crozer, uh, I think so. Of the Detroit Red Wings. Glenn Hall. Okay. 1968 St. Louis Blues. Reggie Leach. 1976 Philadelphia Flyers. Ron Hextall. 1987 Philadelphia Flyers. Yeah. Philly's done it twice. And J.S. Jaguar of the Mighty Ducks. They were the Mighty Ducks then. Yes. In 2003. Yes. And then they were the Ducks when they won it four years later. Yep. Uh, so once in my lifetime. That's not, he hasn't no. been that great. J.S. Jaguar won three series single-handedly, mm-hmm. almost four. Um, uh, to if, be fair. If you can name five players not named J.S. Jaguar from that 03 Ducks team, yeah. I'll pat you on the back. It was a, he's 3-0 and in el- em- elimination games in English. Mm-hmm. And he has a 9.53 save percentage. And a Asterisk. Two of those games were against the Leafs. <laughs> G A A in those games. Two of them versus the Leafs. God, one to, of them last night. I just want to die. <laughs> I just want to die. Um, what uh, about that save by Charlie McAvoy? That's who's getting the crown. Oh yeah, oh, Charlie McAvoy. I guess it. Uh, Do I get a crown? Yes. Can I have Adams? Sure. Hey. There you go. So wait, we're giving two crowns to Charlie McAvoy? No, I get one. Oh, you get for one. guessing Charlie McAvoy. Okay, so the St. Yeah. Louis Dispatch, Guess Charlie one. McAvoy, Jesse Blake. Yes. Got it. Everly. Everly. Everly Wild. Gets Everly one. Wild. Because she's um, a baby and she's beautiful. That's, that's true. You're a little furball. I got to meet her after <laughs> last show. I met her last Very night. Very cute. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, that's a tie game, I think. After It was uh, one nothing. Yeah. In the first period, and he makes that save, I think, near the end of the first. Or was it mid-second? Whatever. Because yeah. when a goalie only allows one goal, and, and it's the... The way that goal went in, it was a spectacular save. It just happened; the puck barely crossed the line. It makes it sound like Tuukka Rask was utterly unbeatable, when in fact, Charlie McAvoy is a frigging Jedi <laughs> and just smacked that thing out of midair, like on the goal line. It's, it's considering unbelievable, and he might have saved the game in the cup. Considering the situation where you are in the season, yep. the amount of skill it took to do that is one of the most yep. incredible plays I've ever seen. Oh, it's and there's been I think 
Tuukka Rask is going to win the Conn Smythe Trophy if the Bruins win the Cup, and the two most impressive saves made by the Bruins in these playoffs were by Charlie McAvoy and David Krejci. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sliding, <laughs> yeah. sliding save, yeah. So, uh, uh, give it to Charlie McAvoy because that was okay. friggin' nuts, and who knows, maybe the Blues are Stanley Cup champions today if he doesn't make that save. So when you're watching the games, why not consider a crown royal at puck drop? Why not? Steve, I ask you this. At the end of every Stanley Cup Finals game, mm. this is the last time I can ask you it. Mm-hmm. I'm putting your prediction on the table once again, and I'm giving you the opportunity to alter your prediction for the Stanley Cup Finals. Are you going to do it? Your prediction is incorrect, the amount of games at this point. Cause Did I say six? I think you said six initially. I can never remember if I said six or seven, but yeah, I did me, say Bruins. You did say Bruins. Okay. So after game five, mm-hmm. I badly wanted to alter it, <laughs> but I stuck with Bruins. After game six, it's Bruins. It's Bruins. It's going to be in a walk. St. Louis, I know that feel. You're going into Boston, game seven. Uh, they're a banged up team that's not going to matter in game seven. It's adrenaline. Uh, leave it all out on the ice. They're not going to lose. The Boston Bruins are going to win the 2019 Stanley Cup. Well, yep. even uh, last night looking at Marchand. 3-1. He was, 3-1 is the score you're predicting? 3-1. Okay. Looking at Marchand last night, he looks like 80% of himself, but he's able to play at a level that's so much higher than ever. Half of their half of their team looks like they're injured. Well, yes. It's First incredible. of all, yes. Whoa, Jesse, whoa. <laughs> so, oh. Way to pull a Steve oh. Dangle and say, all the people who are clearly injured are injured. <laughs> wow. Oh, hot take alert. Oh, my goodness. No, Brad Marchand <laughs> is definitely messed up. Yeah. Um, but you know what helps when you're injured is not having to move. And you know when you don't really have to move is when you have a five-on-three power play because of a dumb rule, but whatever. Braden Chen's stupid fault for taking the stupid boarding penalty in the first place. Um, that shot was frigging unreal. Oh, yeah. There were there were two shots, that being one of them, where I'm like, boy, like it, watching it in real time, I'm like, y- you'd like Bennington to make a save there. And then you watch the slow motion, you're like, what the... F-? He had no chance. <laughs> no, that one and the Coolman one. The Coolman, um, just was- perfect... Bar down. That like, was goal four? Three. Uh, three? Three. Yeah. Goal four was uh, Biddington getting no help because the Blues were just completely cheating to one side. Mm-hmm. Um, man, the, the Bruins brought it, man. The Bruins brought it. 80% of Marchand is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Bergeron is still feisty, but boy, he's playing like a ghost of himself. You think so? Yeah. yeah. Something's I mean, he always gets messed up somehow. Mm-hmm. I think it's difficult to play the amount that he plays, the role that he plays, and the style that he plays for a hundred games a season and not get messed up a little mm-hmm. bit. This happened in twenty thirteen. It's happening again now. I think it's just hard in general to play hockey. Hockey's gotten to the point where it's just so skilled and so fast and the guys are so much bigger and better. Yeah. That it's difficult to play it without getting injured. It's well, and also, it's a testament to Bergeron because I feel it, like we've talked about guys who have hard miles and they just expire. And Ryan Kessler, it was great, great, great. Uh oh, uh oh, mm-hmm. done. Like that's basically how it was. Bergeron should have hit uh oh five years ago, and he just won't. He should have hit uh oh after twenty thirteen, literally just from those playoffs in a lockout shortened season. So he's one of those guys who plays that hard miles style, and he just won't stop, just mm-hmm. won't slow down. He'll come back in October and be fine. Yeah. And there's something about guys who play on good teams because of, like, if you look at the Penguins, if you look at, like, Golden State on, on the basketball side, yeah. it's these teams are playing 20 extra game, 20 whatever extra games than every the rest year. of the league. And it's the consistency of every year of being yeah. a good team and adding on those two extra months of the season – and those two extra months are harder than the previous four, five months. Way harder. You know, because you're playing every single night and it's nonstop and the intensity at which they're playing the sport is so much higher. Raptors might have changed the game this year. Because, <laughs> well, okay, you right? look at Golden State's roster. Mm-hmm. Why on earth are they playing their whole roster every game? 
No, it makes no sense. Like the Raptors, do they load manage Kyle or uh, Lowry? Yes, Lowry did not play uh, every game that season. he could have. Yeah, he was he was injured for the middle part of the year, so there's a lot of that. But he definitely like that was Nick Nurse's entire strategy, giving the right. guys nights off, and then Siakam did his thing when nobody else was available, and it just worked out perfectly. So you have Steph Curry, you have 35 year old Andre Iguodala, you got Kevin Durant, who I want 65 s- games for Lowry during the regular season. Yeah, so, yeah. You there have you Kevin Durant, you have Clay Thompson, you have all these guys. And, like, I'm not saying they got injured because they played all those games. Mm-hmm. I mean, you try to draw a foul and you kick your leg out kind of funny. Guys get injured, it happens. Guys get injured, it happens. But it's easier to stave off injuries when you're more fresh. Mm-hmm. Kawhi said it in a press conference. He said, I probably wouldn't be here if my load wasn't managed or whatever whatever you I mean, phrase he used. He's yeah. probably right. He missed the whole damn season last yeah. year. And you look at his knee now, it's still acting up, even though he sat out so many games. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's, That's very important. Maybe, maybe I, this is the new future. Hopefully, maybe the NHL adopts it, and you see guys rest more during the regular season, and then maybe when you should play your players in the postseason, they actually get the ice time they're supposed to play. And like, they don't play 17 minutes in Game 7. Oh, my God. Just... <laughs> Well, because their idea of load management was spreading it out over four lines every game, whatever, whatever. You couldn't you couldn't look at Matthew's injury, the hit from Truba, and go, well, it's because of uh, the absence of load management. No, it just happens. But when you put them in fewer games, you lower the risk of it. It's weird. It feels easier to do in basketball, but it should be easier to do in hockey because there's more players. There's also an understanding in the NBA that the regular season doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> Guy, it's it's just a matter of fact. Guys yeah. don't play anymore for the regular season awards and for everything. Westbrook goes out. He has a triple-double during the regular season but can't make it out of the second round. Ever. So, ever. Well, except yeah. for one time he did with Golden State and then they got they lost a 3-1 lead. To, yeah. uh, sorry, with OKC and then they lost a 3-1 lead to Golden State. But is the guys just realizing we don't need to prove anything in the regular season. We can be the second seed like Golden State was. And it's about being ready for the fi- for the playoffs and pr- making your legacy there because that's what matters in sports. It's championships. And that's it. Is that going to bleed into hockey now that so. uh, all f- four division winners lost? <laughs> it should. <laughs> people, hockey people should take a hard look at that. Yeah, well... It doesn't uh, hockey matter. People should take a hard look at a number of things. Yeah. The big issue is the playoffs are literally a different sport. So there's that. And you, you need to frankly construct your team for in that with that in mind. Yeah, and maybe a, play the regular season as a tune up for the yeah. 16 wins you need in the playoffs. I'm warming up to the idea that you just need to be I don't know, bigger, tougher, whatever when it comes to the playoffs. Uh, and it's not just because that's the type of hockey that wins. It's no, that's the type of hockey that they allow, not that is played, that is allowed uh, in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Is what it is. One thing I thought that you said last episode that was really important was the penalties called on the Blues, and how you said that. Okay, can't they, call everything. They got they got five penalties against them, but they probably committed thirty. Yes, and you can't call all thirty. A hundred. <laughs> I thought that was so, so people, I've seen people post these charts and, no, oh, well, look at the Bruins, and they were one of the most called, and this and I'm like, imagine what wasn't. Imagine what wasn't called. Like, why, why are you pulling out your chart when I'm pointing out specific example that he took out this guy's knee. He slew-footed this guy. He punched this guy in the back of the head. The league even said, whoops. And that's one guy yeah. that I'm talking about. That being said, uh, we're talking about the Blues here. He I made who shall not Bruins. be named. Yes, is, he, is he who must not be named. <laughs> Marshawn Demort. I don't even know what to... Marsh... There's something with Marvolo. Anyway, um, the Blues were at it again, though, in game uh, five. Mm-hmm. It didn't... Re- oh, in game five. In game five. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Braden Chen maybe gets five for that in the regular season. The the boarding, hit from behind, whatever you want to call it, they're almost one and the same. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, pretty lucky. Pretty yeah. lucky. And Bert- okay, so I said something outlandish in my video today. So what did you say? The game's done. Like, it's, it's done. There's uh, less than a minute to go. I think it was less than 30 seconds to go. Bruins are up 5-1. Mm-hmm. Game's done. 
so what I, what I've liked about uh, basketball is in the final like thirty seconds, if the winning team has the ball and they're up by like twenty, just dribble it. Yeah, you dribble out the you dribble out the clock. Yeah, yeah, the game's over. So if you're a coach and you put anything other than your five least valuable players in, in a hockey game, I think you're an idiot now because Robert Bertuzzo, with absolutely nothing to lose and no, I don't know what's the punishment. He just punches Nolachari in the face, who I guess is on the fourth line, whatever, or the the fourth line that's the f- the third line, but also their fourth line. Uh, he just punches him right in the head. And he gets a two-minute minor, and because it means literally dick all, he starts skating off the ice as he punches him and winks at the bench. So what I said in the video is, should there be in a playoff series anyway? Because, like, okay, let's say the Leafs commit a, commit a penalty against the Hurricanes, and then the next night they play the Flyers. Well, the Leafs shouldn't be down against the Flyers. That's a no. random... Thing, but in a playoff series, if you commit that, should you get a penalty that carries over to Game Seven? No. Why not? No. <laughs> Why? It's a free punch, then. Yes. Which, in every other part of society, is called assault. No, but <laughs> <laughs> hockey's already created the sport that which allows that. Uh, I think that's that's something that you've created. I, organically or not, yeah. within the game, and that's what you have to deal with because that's what you've made it. So this is what you've there's constructed. just no law. There's you just can, no law. You can go up and punch punch people in the face regularly in hockey. You can take your stick and whack somebody. Yes, but there's consequences. There's sure. no consequence here. You've lost the game, and you're acknowledging that the game's yeah, over. So you, you're getting in your free you shot. Be down six one in the first period and say the game's over. I'm gonna fight everybody, which regularly happens. Yes, but it's also not over over. This is over. It's if you make that decision at seven nothing with the third period starting, or if you make it at two minutes left and it's seven nothing, it's the same decision. Mm, it's the same decision of I'm just gonna, in essence. I guess I'm going to go punch somebody because I'm upset that it, I'm losing, and I'm going to try and take them out this way. In essence, I guess. That's, so that's just, my argument. So there's just nothing. I think I think there's nothing stopping. I think you've created this. Is this is the sport? The sport mm-hmm. we love. But this is what they've created, and it lends itself to reckless violence sometimes. Literally. <laughs> Literally L- reckless violence. I just There's got to be some sort of punishment <laughs> for that. Like, uh, yeah. I think it was a Tyler Dello thing before he went dark, because he works for the Devils now. Mm-hmm. Um, but he was talking he about... He went dark low. No, he went, oh, no, Tyler... D- no, let's not. Let's <laughs> Tyler not. dark low. Um, wh- uh, <laughs> Jesus, Jesse. <laughs> he was talking about um, when, when the net is empty... It's lawless out there. When the net is empty, especially and a guy has a clear path or something like that, or an open shot at the net, it's lawless out there. And that actually happened to the Calgary Flames this year. Johnny Gaudreau has an open shot at an empty net, so Dustin Bufflin just tomahawks him in the arm, because why not? Why not? Oh, I'll get a penalty? Well, it's like an intentional foul. You know, it's, well, the game's over if I don't do it. So I might as well take a whack. Mm -hmm. I just feel like shouldn't there be something extra? What is the... I just... I'm just sticking up... Listen, you know how hard it is for me to feel bad for any Bruin? Yeah, what are you you trying to stop? only. (laughs) You're trying to stop guys getting punched in the face? Is that it? No, I'm trying to stop... (laughs) You know what I'm trying to stop? Yeah, what are you trying to end here? Pricks like Robert Bertuzzo. Okay. That's what I'm trying to stop. Mm. This frigging guy beats up his own teammate at practice. And now he's at least elevated to beating up the other team. But <laughs> the fact that he's just able to get a free punch yeah. on a guy and wink. Like, they even bring that up in court cases. They're like, you know what, Your Honor, at least my client feels really bad for what they did. He thinks it's hilarious. And I just don't think you should be able to get away with that. I just don't know how you punish them. I a think- penalty that carries over to Game right. 7 of the Stanley Cup Final is obviously ridiculous. A suspension is probably a bit much. A fine. Fines don't deter anything. We've discovered that. I, I'd almost be satisfied with a fine. There should be... Listen, if we if we can't agree on giving them a minor that carries over or a suspension, what's left? Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we 
put them in that thing that you stick your head and hands through from like the Middle Ages. Forget what it's called. The stocks yeah. or whatever. Is that what it's called? I, think I don't so. know. Um, all I know is someone uh, stuck my head in it when I was on my bachelor party in Halifax and then they walked away. <laughs> so that was fun. Uh, and I was uncomfortable and I have a giant head. Listen, mm. a fine is at least something. Okay. And they got to call it the stupid tax or something or like the prick clause. Because I just feel like there's, there's, there's there a couple- can be there can be like a an overarching rule where it's like the final two minutes of, of a game, if you commit an intentional penalty, we have a right to fine you, and you can keep it vague enough that the NHL could be like, oh, we don't want to find him here, or we want to find him here. You yeah, know, like I mean, there's legitimate penalties in the final two minutes, but sure. I'm talking that's what, 22 that's what I mean. seconds left. That's what I mean. You if, punch a guy in the head if you put in the rule where it's like intentional penalty or something. You know? Yeah. Nah, yeah. It's an it's intent to injure. It's a thought. Like there's you know? something there. There's something there you need that to should d- be punished. Yeah. And maybe you're a player and you go like players have said it publicly before. They go, you know what? Best money I ever spent. Mm-hmm. I, I can't remember who it was. Someone it was Brandon Press. I want to say it was Brandon Press speared Brad Marchand in the nuts. And he goes, Best money I ever spent. And you know what? If Robert Bertuzzo heading into game seven in the Stanley Cup final, the game that every kid dreams about, says, you know what? Five thousand dollars well spent. That's fine, but you still spend five thousand dollars. If you should I, get something, and it goes on your record. If I put you in a room with Brad Marchand and I give you a hockey stick, and mm-hmm. he's wearing a cup, mm-hmm. and I say five thousand dollars out of your bank account, and you get to spear him in the nuts, would you pay it? Uh, no. <laughs> I am not as rich as Brandon Prest. That guy made a lot of money, man. What about I am a video blogger. What about a hundred dollars? All right, now we're talking. And he says he's in on it. He's like, yeah, I'll let Steve Dangle do it. No, then he's game. Uh, no. Then he's in on it. <laughs> it's me not in on it. It takes all the fun away. <laughs> takes all the fun out of it. We have to get to the Edmonton Oilers news because we are running out of time. I'm so sorry, everyone who's listening yeah. who expected a full episode today because you will not get that. Because no. ESPN is in town. And funny enough, they use the same studio as us when they are in town. So when <laughs> because they have to record their podcasts... Uh, before the Raptors play tonight, they will be taking oh up our God. studio, so we only have about an hour to record our podcast. That, so those, that's that's what's happening right now. So we're going to do like a forty-five minute episode, and it is like legitimately going to affect the city, especially if they win. Oh yeah. So like if we tried to, so you can't do the show tomorrow because you're doing something ridiculous. Are you even allowed to reveal? Uh yeah. Richard Branson is going to be in town on Virgin Radio. The where Virgin owner, billionaire person, day job. Yeah, the yes. guy who owns the Virgin brand. <laughs> And we're uh, we're going to the CN Tower, and we're going to be doing some stuff with them there. Yeah. So I have to I have to help out help out filming that some parts of that. So that'll be fun. You'll be the tallest person in Toronto. I'll be taller than the CN Tower. Oh my god, <laughs> that's uh, yeah yeah. Nuts. So I'll be up there, and that'll be fun. So, yeah. but imagine also, oh my god. So yeah, that's why we you can't might be tomorrow. on top of the CN Tower the day after the Raptors win the NBA championship. I will. I will be. You will be. Also, I'm going to be at the game tonight. What? <laughs> Yeah, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. How are you gonna be at the game? Your boy got some tickets. How? You know, it's just you the, did not buy them. I didn't know. You didn't buy them, Jesse. I'm, Jesse I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna enjoy the game tonight from inside the arena. I'm gonna witness uh, an NBA championship. Oh my god! The Toronto Raptors when they win, I'm gonna be in the building. You're, you're witnessing the the comeback of Kevin Durant. I'm Sh- sure. Oof, no. You know, I pray to God. They need to... Do we want to talk about the Raptors or the Oilers? We should talk about the Oilers and then... Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the Oilers today announced that... Let me just pull it up. Bob Nicholson Mm -hmm. has been promoted to the role of chairman. And they've hired Tom and Selmy as president of business operations and COO. Chief operating officer. So Nicholson was previously the CEO... And vice chair of the of the Oilers, he's been there since 2014. And Selmy was in Ottawa before this. He was president and CEO of the Senators. He resigned in February. Resigned. He yes. bailed on that shit. He resigned in February after yeah. one year with the team. So, uh, president of Ho- and hockey operations and general manager Ken Holland will continue to report to Nicholson and continue to have full autonomy over the team. I still don't understand what Bob Nicholson does. <laughs> for the Oilers, and the title of his role doesn't tell me anything, really. I think he's good friends with Daryl Daryl Cates. Well, so that was 
that was my first thought mm-hmm. when I saw that press conference was, you know, oh, it's the crazy Oilers. What are they going to do next? But then I'm like, okay, they announced the press conference at like 8 a.m. locally. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I know Daryl Cates' health is poor that we all recently learned. And it's in the middle of the Stanley Cup final. It's like, okay, this is weird. They don't just wait. Right. Yeah. So, um, we thought I, there I guess, might have been bad news about his health. Yeah. So, am, am I wrong? Am I misunderstanding that he's taking a step like even further back? No, it seems like. They, it seems like he's just he's still going to be own, owner. Yeah, but and, is is Bob Nicholson taking on more responsibilities? Yes, I think he was also. I think he was owner and chairman, and I think that chairman role that Nicholson is fulfilling was Cates's role. Oh, okay. Yes. So Tom and Selmy is getting brought in. Yes, to fill Nicholson's role. Okay, there you go. Yes, and Cates and Nicholson's moving up to where Cates was, but Cates is all, still will be involved. Right. In his owner capacity, and kind of I'm the boss. So Tom Anselmi's a weird figure uh, in Toronto because mm-hmm. a lot of TFC fans really don't like him. Despise him. Despise him. <laughs> I don't know exactly why because I'm not like the biggest TFC fan, but I guess basically when he was there, TFC was ass. So there's that. And also people here care about TFC, but then they got a championship, so whatever. Um, I will say this about Tom Anselmi, though, and it's a story from, from my book. Uh, if you've read it, wonderful. If you haven't, here's the story. So... I was walking through Real Sports when I worked there, um, and it was the F- Leafs' first. It was the home opener, one year, or it might have even been the second game at home. But Maple Leaf Square had just become a thing. So Maple Leaf Square, Jurassic Park, whatever. It was a brand new thing. So I was walking through, and there was this older guy in front of me, and he looked familiar. And he turned around and he locked eyes with me, and I go, "Oh yeah, no, I definitely know that guy." But then he kept looking at me. I'm like, "What?" And he goes. Dangle, hey, how how you doing or whatever? What? And it was Tom Anselmi. Who was at the time the president of MLSE. He was, and people uh, don't know, MLSE owns the Leafs, Raptors, TFC, and, and now Mar- Argos and Marlies. And the Argos, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I keep forgetting they have the Argos. So we were talking a little bit. We walk outside and my parents are both there in um, Maple Leaf Square just to check it out because mm-hmm. that's what they do. And they're both wearing Canadian tuxedos. Uh, denim jacket, denim jeans, jeans, denim jeans. Is there a different kind of jeans? Anyway, uh, and I introduced Tom and something to my parents, and I knew his name. Yeah. Um, and I go, uh, Mom, Dad, this is Tom and something. He's, um, I go, what's your title again? And his like smile kind of drops. He goes, Chief Operating Officer. <laughs> I go, CEO. Cool. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, for sure. But then he goes, um, yeah, where are you guys sitting tonight? And they go, oh, we don't have tickets for the game. And he looks at me, he goes, you couldn't get your parents' tickets? I go, no. I made, like, <laughs> less than 15 grand. You're a child. I, yeah. <laughs> um, and so he goes, here, I'll be right back. And he leaves for about 10 minutes and comes back. And my parents both got seats, and they won 5-1 that night. Police. That's incredible. Yeah. What year was this, you said? It would have been 2011 12. So I think okay. it would have been the tail end of 2011. Yeah, he was there from 95 to 2013. Yeah. Whatever 2013. year it was, it was Clark MacArthur's first year as a Leaf. Okay. Whatever, so whatever year that was. I I know. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thank you for your reference that everybody will know right off they the will. top of their head. They will. <laughs> that's all Tom and Tommy does is he just follows Clark MacArthur wherever that's, he that's goes. His, that's Clark his MacArthur's about to sign with the Oilers. We figured it out. We figured it out. <laughs> so they make this decision today. Yes. And it's uh, it's an odd one. It's they're, They put more cooks in the kitchen, I guess. They could have given Nicholson. In the business kitchen. In the business, yes, yeah. but that seems like to be their issue. Management, right. yeah. I, I, I'm reluctant to judge this decision too harshly. Okay, because just because my instinct was there's some sort of upheaval within the Oilers, and it's not necessarily anything to do with the changing of the guard with Ken Holland. It may have something to do with. The owner's very sick, you know. So I, I don't, I don't know enough about how things are run to judge that. So, speaking of Ken Holland, you sent me an interesting article today. Yes, uh, in the Athletic, Ken Holland did a Q and A with Daniel Nugent Bowman. Yes, 
Hopkins. There's a couple things he says in there that are interesting. Good. One, he talks about McDavid and Dreisaitl. Okay. And them playing together. Okay. He begins his response by saying, that's the coach's job. And then he says, <sighs> other nights they'll play a part. Lots of nights they'll play together. Going into training camp, I think Dave Tippett's expectation is to play them together. Which sounds like, it's the coach's decision, but I want them to play together. See, that's interesting. I thought it was the opposite. I think it was, or it sounded to me like, well, I know the coach wants to play them together, but my instinct is to have them play apart. Because read is how it, he though? says it. He read, says, read my feeling's always been to put power in the coach. Okay. I'm going to be, he's certainly as the manager, I'm going to be around. I'm going to be on the plane. Lots of nights they'll play together. Other nights they'll play apart. Going into training camp, I think Dave Tippett's expectation is to play them together. See, the way I read that as I, I read that as if it were my decision, I would play them apart. But I believe in giving the coach power, so he's going to play them together. Can I? Yes. Counterpoint you with something he says later in the article. Oh dear. When Bowman asks him how much help does the team need on the wings, he says between Drysidle and Nugent Hopkins, that's one winger. I don't know which one, but one of them's a winger. Uh, well, okay. That's your general manager. I, I guess it's okay if you have one of them as a winger. I don't think they should do it, though. Wingers That's are the easiest, saying. most plentiful resource in the National Hockey League. You madmen. You can have the Oilers, literally, if they just decide to, have the best one, two, three down the middle in the league. Better than the Leafs, even. Potentially. How? Why? Go get some random fast guys. Get Connor Brown and make him into a 20-goal scorer again. Oh, they're nuts. They're nuts. They're nuts. I don't get it, man. Why not? This is going to be crazy. Imagine if Ian and Rachel were still here. What if? <laughs> yeah. What if mm -hmm. they play three lines and it works out really well a lot of nights and they win a bunch of games? But listen, Jesse, it's an 82-game season. You're not going to win every game. So maybe you find yourself in a pinch. Maybe you're down 3-2, 4-2 in the third period. And then you make a super line. <laughs> and that's when they get to play together. What if your lines don't have to stay the same like a freaking video game? What? Even video games have adapted that you can change the lines. <laughs> like, literally, all the Oilers have to do is go, we would like to have the best 1-2-3 up the middle. And then they will. Steve? Yes. Some nights they'll play together, and other nights they'll play apart. Other nights they'll play apart. So maybe he agrees most with nights me. they'll play together. <laughs> maybe he agrees with me. I don't know. Nugent Hopkins, Drysaddle, one of them's a winger. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Nugent Hopkins. Let's sure. Argue. Let's sure. Argue. Then you have you have Nuge with McDavid, and who cares on the right? Mm -hmm. And then Drysaddle plays with Guy and Guy. Find guys. Most plentiful resource in the hockey world. I know it didn't go with my slamming thing, but whatever. It's true. <laughs> do you want to do it again? Most plentiful resource <laughs> in the league right now, this year, in Edmonton. Uh, he also spoke on Keith Gretzky. Because we cannot this was talk ghost about written the by Jim Matheson. <laughs> we cannot talk about the Oilers without checking in on our dear friend. No. So Bowman asked him, "Hey, what the hell's going on with the Gretz man?" Nick uh, Holland said, "Keith's gonna stay." NHL by Maddie said, "Yay!" Yeah. <laughs> he continued, "I want him to be the general manager of Bakersfield. He really enjoys Bakersfield. It's really important that we draft and we develop." Bakersfield is a big part of development, and we want a real good culture down there. Okay. So that sounds like what he's going to be doing. Listen, now that I think a big problem with the Oilers wasn't just the too many cooks in the kitchen. It was the what do any of the cooks do? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a big problem. I didn't know what the hell any of them did. Uh, this, to me, is encouraging. 
hey, Keith Gretzky's role is this and only this. Right. And I don't think it's so bad to have a guy in charge uh, who manages development. It sounds like Oilers fans are relatively excited about a few of the guys they have down there in Bakersfield. Those are the guys who might end up turning this team around. You know what I mean? Um, most teams, even the ones where you go, oh, the cupboard is totally bare, most of them have at least someone who can provide third or fourth line depth that you didn't know about. You know what I mean? Like, they surprise even the organization. They they give them an opportunity in a pinch, and, oh, all right, we this guy can give us nine quality minutes a night. After that, it gets a little hairy, but we can get nine quality minutes a night out of this guy. So... Keith Gretzky manages Bakersfield just fine. I think the Oilers will be fine. I still I stand by it that I know their goalie's not very good. I know their defense is a mess. I know they don't have any wingers for some reason. But when you have Connor McDavid, I just feel like anything's possible. At very least, the frigging playoffs. Yeah, in a division should. that stinks. You can the Pacific lock into Division that. stinks. It should be. It should be so easy. It really. It well. Listen. No. Yes, it should be easy. You have the best player. Yeah, it should be easy. I'll that with a, with a capital E. You're starting with the best hand. Like they gave you the best. They gave you the pole position. You yes. should be able to finish. It's like it's like when you play president, you have a joker and five threes. Yeah. <laughs> like, you should be you able still to do have something. A joker though, like you should at least be vice ass. All right. <laughs> vice ass. Sorry, I went to summer camp a lot. <laughs> Um, he also mentioned in the article, it's hard to have guys who have 70 points like Nugent Hopkins and put them on the third line. I think you're wasting somebody there. We can close that out. I don't... Maybe. I Okay. Maybe. Sure. Uh, and that's what I was saying. Yeah. Nuge is your guy who you put on the wing and dry settles your second line center. Mm-hmm. There you go. There it is. Well, Because otherwise, who is your freaking... Who's your number two center then? Mm-hmm. Okay, even... Well, one of them. I feel like Nugent Hopkins is good enough to be a good winger for McDavid. Like, okay, McDavid dry sidle, obviously, borderline automatic goal. Do I you get think, it. Do you think Tavares would, is good enough to be a wing for Matthews? You know what? He just might be. Just saying. Kadri, Matthews, Tavares. But listen, listen to <laughs> listen to the way I talk about the Leafs, though, because I've said for a while, hey, why not throw Kadri on the wing? Notice how I picked the third best one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm never, I've never gone. You know what? Matthew should be on the wing. <laughs> you know when Matthew should be on the wing or Tavares should be on the wing? If there's 30 seconds to go and they're losing. Yeah, or they're on a power play. Or the yes, yes, five on five. I believe in yeah throwing out a monstrous line. Um, with like a 90 seconds to go, maybe. Otherwise, yeah, give yourself at least two centers. And why not have it be your two best ones? Because either way, you have to go get a center. Somebody has to play that position. Yes. Why not use the good guys there? Also, keep in mind, like, I'm not taking anything away from Nugent Hopkins, but part of the reason he had 70 is he was playing with McDavid. Right. So it's not like, well... Oh, we're wasting this guy's potential. It's no, you're putting him in the role he probably ought to be in. One more thing. Yes. Jeff Skinner signed a eight year deal, seventy two million dollars. Average annual value of nine million dollars. Uh twenty seven, uh, career yep. high, forty goals, and he tied his high with sixty three points in eighty two games last year. Not easy to trade either. Have you seen the makeup of the deal? No. It like starts high, goes down, goes back up. Oh gosh. It it makes it uh it's it's one of those deals where you know how we were talking about like Zaitsev and Marlowe and the signing bonus and once it's paid it makes it easier to trade. Skinner's like the opposite is hard to trade and then it's easier slightly, but then it gets much harder to trade. <sighs> and that yeah, it's very interesting. Luckily yeah. he's not ancient, right? In Four years, 2022-23, he has a $7.5 million signing bonus. Yes. So in the middle of that contract, he's got, on July 1st, he's got to get a big payday. Yeah, so it's almost like, if you want to trade me, do it this particular year. Do it 2022. Yeah. So then, yeah. It's odd. So then you don't reach that offseason and have to pay that big lump sum. Yeah. That's very weird. It's very weird. He's also got a no movement clause. So. so, 
Jesse, mm-hmm. have, uh, do you have his point totals up right now? Or goal totals? I do. So, how many times has he scored 30 goals? Jeff Skinner in his career? Yes. Oh, well, he did. He had a 50 with the Kitchener Rangers. How many times is NHL career? 30 goals. One, two, three, four. Oh, four. Four times. Okay, I, I thought it was three. That's very good. Mm-hmm. Wow, four. Now, for a guy who's... And how many times has he scored 40? Just the one? Just the, just last year, yeah. Okay. So $9 million for... He actually had 31 his first NHL uh, season. That's he was great. amazing as a rookie. Yeah. yeah, he had some concussion problems that sort of sidelined him, and mm-hmm. he's, he's back. He's pretty good. Uh, now, doesn't $9 million seem like a lot of money for eight years for a guy who's only hit 30 goals four times? Y- yes and no. Okay. Would you give that kind of money to someone who's done it zero times? I would never. Mitch Marner. <laughs> Listen, I-, I love Mitch Marner with all my cotton candy, sweet flavored heart. Mm-hmm. Um, is that what we're doing? Yes, it is. <laughs> I-, I-, I Cotton candy, sweet flavored heart. I love Mitch Marner. But if we're going to play this game... We're going to play this game. I think CJ nailed it uh, when he was in. Listen, Mitch Marner deserves a shitload of money. He's not the best winger in the league, but he's one of them. Mm -hmm. You get overpaid if you're a center and if you score goals. Guy has a career high of 26. You're not getting 11 million. You're not. No, 11 million has always been ridiculous and it will continue to be ridiculous. You're not getting 10. You're not getting 10. Nine. All right. We're paying for potential at that point. With anything with this contract, you're paying for potential. Because if you're playing for the output, Mm -hmm. the output is not even close to $10 million. Because he hasn't been in the league long enough to earn that. Right. So we're paying for the years we think he's going to get this. Unless you are particularly special. Exactly. Unless you are Connor McDavid. Is, Is, well... I would argue, even though he maybe he got a contract that a lot of people didn't love, Austin Matthews' skill set is more special than Mitch Marner's. Yeah, I don't think anybody would argue with that. It it putting the puck in the net is the hardest thing to do, and Matthews does it in his sleep. Mm-hmm. You're not getting the same money as Matthews. Sorry, I know I just took a slam dunk Sabres topic yeah. and made it about the Leafs. <laughs> Career high twenty six goals, ten million. You've fallen and bumped your head. No. If Cal, what happens if what happens to Cal Dubas if he gives them that contract? What do we say about? Dubas? Uh, he's handcuffed himself and made his job really hard to do. No, if if Marner won't budge from that, listen, Masai Ujiri screwed it up for all of you. <laughs> he screwed it up for all of you. He proved that winning's possible in Toronto. This is not only winning, but like. The, if the Raptors win, it's the dawn of the Dream Maker era. You know what I mean? It's the dawn of the Dream Maker era in this city. Um, and if you don't want to be part of the Dream, get out of town. You don't have to be here. Nobody has to be here. It's win. The, we've said, we've argued on the player's behalf how many times that there's absolutely no loyalty in sports, there's none. So go out and get your money. And now, players are getting their money. And so I'm just reminding teams, NHL teams, NBA teams, I don't think NBA teams ever forgot this, but I'm just reminding teams, there's no loyalty here. You have one job, win. One job. If you can't do that with Mitch Marner, then you can't. Don't don't bother handcuffing yourself with a stupid contract. Mitch Marner at anything. What what's the number? You're happy with anything under ten? E, like that's e- what that's what we've settled on a couple times now. Yeah, yeah, like Ian was Ian was was uh, funny with it because Rachel's like hardcore nine seven five. <laughs> that is my absolute max. Yeah. And he goes, well, okay, what if like nine point eight? Well, or something. Ha- like but that. eventually, you have to have a number. Eventually, you have to have a number. It cannot be double digits. No. I still say he would be very wise. I love my idea. 9.95. 
I which I still think is too much money. That's Jeff Skinner just got. Yeah, I think it's too much $9 million. money. But people will still look at it and go, "Yes!" People will look at Mitch Marner making 9.95 and celebrate and also condemn Nylander for making a hair under seven. You know those people exist by the thousands, right? In a vacuum, nine point, just on a stat sheet, mm-hmm. 9.95, 9.999 is ridiculous mm-hmm. for Mitch Marner. Uh, here's one thing that the Leafs need to get out of it, especially if it's going to be that number. Mm-hmm. Eight. It's eight got years, to yeah. be eight That's fair. years. So a lot of players uh, signed longer deals. The Bruins are actually a good example of it. Bergeron signed a nice long deal. Marshawn signed a nice long deal. Bergeron, uh, Pasternak is just at the beginning of a of a nice long deal. But Pasternak's contract, by the way, is incredible. It's incredible, and it's an outlier. <laughs> and he held out for it. It's so annoying. Again. So annoying. <laughs> but um, like Bergeron and Marshawn. Um, they they signed for their nice little number. And at the time, like at the moment of signing, it might have seemed like a lot of money. But the thing is the cap constantly goes up. So if he signs for eight years, like I, I think a contract's okay where if for the first two years you're like, that's ah, a little bit too much. And then by years three, four, five, six, you're like, ah, actually, that's pretty good. The... NHL salary cap isn't supposed to go up as much as everybody anticipated. Oh, really? Do we see... <laughs> should teams be banking on that? In, just on in the terms cap of, going up? Yeah, because economically, coming. it should. Like, yeah. Just just by the metrics of economics, it will in the next 10 years. Yeah. But if it doesn't go as mu- up as much as people think it will... Should the least be catering towards that, or do they go a little more conservative? Like, um, what's the what's the strategy there? I think you should. I mean, you shouldn't ever be spending cap space like a drunken sailor. Uh-huh. You know, you should always be spending it wisely. It all it's all held up by this guy, by this one guy. You can't sign Kapanen. You can't sign Janssen. I'm gonna get a little concerned if they do. Before they get Mitch Marner done. Yeah, yeah because then I'm gonna be like, uh. This sounds an awful lot like they're making up their mind. Or maybe that could even be a negotiation strategy. Listen, here's what it is. Here's where we are. Here's what we can afford to pay you. You want to be here or not? Yeah. Nope. If you sign right, those bye. guys, then they have their hard number in mind. Yep. What does Jeff Skinner signing mean for the Buffalo Sabres? It's a, you know what? A lot of people were talking about how he's overpaid. Uh, Yeah, for sure. But, you know, there's a few markets where... It sucks to be you. You're overpaid. Or uh, you got to overpay. Buffalo's one. Winnipeg's another. <laughs> and uh, Buffalo... Uh, Jeff Skinner... Guys, relax. Jeff Skinner's not Thomas Vanek. That's not going to happen to you. Because that happened a few years ago. I think it was Daniel Briere was stolen away from uh, Buffalo. Chris Drury was stolen away from Buffalo, those ridiculous teams. And then the Oilers offer sheeted Vanek. Mm-hmm. That's one we always forget to bring up. The Oilers offer sheeted Vanek, and the Sabres matched it. And he was tremendously overpaid. And the Oilers, by the way, another team that has to overpay, and that's why they gave him that redonkulous amount of money. Skinner's better than that. I, I just think Skinner's better than Vanek, um, and he's a guy who chose to stay. He chose to stay, and I... For a team like Buffalo, who's one of those teams, it's it's never bad news. It's bad news if he sucks, for sure, but he doesn't, so relax. <laughs> yeah, he's proven he doesn't suck. Yeah, he's, yeah. listen, a little bit overpaid. You can live with a little bit overpaid. Don't also, worry about it. Leafs fans, all of you listening, Jack Eichel's at $10 million, Skinner's at 9 and Ocpozo's at 6 So would you rather have that or Tavera's at 11 <laughs> Matthew's near 11 and Marner at nine ish, and Nylander at six something. I know my answer. Hit your third rounders, folks. <laughs> Hit your third rounders. Draft well, and you can overpay. Yeah. Uh, if you have guys worth overpaying, then you're good. Right. We are. Well, I'm out of time. We're done, and there's people staring at us from the window, yeah. so I think we're done. I think, um, uh, we have one more show this week, and it's live. So, would you uh, like to see that? Yes. Yes, you would. So go to my most recent uh, Instagram post. So Jesse and I, and 
possibly Adam, but we don't we know. Should, we should drag him out. Oh, I'll gladly take him. <laughs> this isn't me going, Adam, you stay away from this. It's He's got a precious baby daughter girl. All right. Precious baby girl. Right. So that is um, Friday, June 14th, 7 p.m., Indigo presents Steve Dangle, Chapters 20, William Kitchen Road, Scarborough, Ontario. That's Kennedy Commons. Live podcast. Tickets required. There is a link in my uh, most recent Instagram post. Also check out my Twitter because I'm going to be posting it there as well. Bye. Did you, that, that's not the end of the show. Oh, it's not? Did you sign out like that? Bye. That's, no, it's not the end of the show? We can say goodbye properly. What's the end of the... Oh, sorry. I thought those... Guys, I, I they told, look like ESPN people. They They're scary. are, but I told them two minutes. Let's skip Bayless right out there. Or no, he's, he's Fox Sports, right? Yeah, Who's not. ESPN? Stephen A. Oh, shit. <laughs> no. What if he's out there? <laughs> he's not. Can we ask him hockey <laughs> questions? Like what does he think about the Jeff could... Skinner contract? I would love to talk to Stephen A. Smith. It doesn't have to be about hockey. It can be about anything. I heard he was yelling about the Leafs today. Again? Wait, what do you mean again? Remember I played the clip for you. <gasps> oh, no, 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 no. Like he was yelling specifically about the Leafs. That no. one was him talking about hockey, which is how Americans what who don't like hockey say hockey. I don't know. How, how I've did been, we not play this the, the entire show? Jesse, I've been freaking running around all day. I'm We're, upset. What if we I'm, play we the, we'll, let's play the clip on Friday. No, we don't have those capabilities. What are we going to do? Sit there? Yes. And did it play it off our phones? Into the microphone. We're, yes. in, our, we're in our chapters. Yeah. Can't. Come see us on Friday. We're going to be live in a chapter. It's not playing audio from Stephen A. Smith. Bye. <laughs> Follow the guys on Twitter at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.